Hey everyone, welcome back to Six Sister Stuff. Today I'm sharing with you my top 10 fall soup recipes. So my name is Kristen Hills and I am the second sister or second oldest sister out of all of the six sisters. Now every Sunday we share an Instant Pot recipe with you guys, but this week we're sharing our top 10 soup recipes. Now you've probably seen a few of these, but I just wanted to give you a good selection because fall is coming, it is soup season, and that is one of my most favorite things to cook in the Instant Pot. So if you guys are ready, let's get cooking. So the first recipe I'm making is broccoli cheddar soup. Now I've got a few suggestions to make vegetarian meals. This is a vegetarian if you use vegetable broth. It is amazing either way. So you're gonna start with a small medium onion, but because I didn't have a normal onion, I used green onions. So I put those in the bottom of my Instant Pot. Next you're gonna add a fourth a cup to a half a cup of shredded carrots. Just make sure you don't add more than a half a cup. Next, you're gonna add four cups of broccoli, all chopped up. And then on top of that, you're gonna add three cups of chicken broth. Now for the seasoning, you're gonna add one fourth teaspoon of nutmeg, and then one tablespoon of hot sauce. I'm just using red hot hot sauce, it's my favorite. All right, and that is it for now. So you're gonna put the lid on. Please excuse my dirty lid. I made something right before this. And you're gonna make sure that little knob is turned to sealing. Then you're gonna push the pressure cook or the manual button and go down to three minutes. Now after you set your timer, you're gonna wait a few seconds and then your Instant Pot's gonna beep and it's gonna say on. That means you're doing it right, so go ahead and walk away from your Instant Pot. Now when it's all done cooking, it will say L and it will start counting up. So this has been done cooking for about three minutes. I'm gonna switch it over to a quick release, take the lid off, and my soup smells absolutely delicious. I'm gonna use a potato masher and just kind of mash up my broccoli because I don't want huge chunks in my broccoli soup. Next, you're gonna add one and a half cups of cream. Well, that's what the recipe calls for, but I'm actually gonna add one and a half cups of milk so it's a little bit healthier. If you want this to be a creamy soup, make sure you use cream. If you don't really care and it's a little thinner, you can use just normal milk. And the last thing to add is two cups of cheddar cheese. The soup is still really, really hot, so I'm just gonna mix this around and the cheese will melt into it. Now, if you wanna thicken it up a little bit, you can push cancel and then saute and get rid of that extra liquid to have it more chunky. But obviously, I used milk, so it's gonna be a little thinner. If you use the cream, it will be a lot thicker for you. Now on top, I added a little bit more cheddar cheese and a few more green onions. All right, number two is our loaded taco soup. Now this is one of my favorites and one of my kids' favorites. They like it because they can choose which toppings they wanna to put on top of the taco soup, whether it's tortillas or cheese or sour cream or whatever they want. This recipe is super easy to make and because it's my loaded taco soup, it will fill you up. You're gonna first start by pushing the saute button. We're gonna brown the meat. Now I'm using ground turkey because that's one of my favorite things to cook with. You can use ground beef if you want. Now I have this little thing called a chop and stir. It's a game changer when cooking your meat. When your meat is browned, you're gonna add one seven ounce can of diced green chilies, one 10 ounce can of Rotel tomatoes, one can of corn, and I left most of the liquid in there, one can of black beans, which I did rinse, and then one can of garbanzo beans. Then we're gonna add one can of diced tomatoes. Now it's time to add some of the spices. I'm gonna start with a half a teaspoon of pepper, and I'm kind of just eyeballing this, and a half a teaspoon of salt. Same, just kind of eyeballing. Next we're gonna add a half teaspoon of onion powder, one half teaspoon of oregano, one teaspoon of onion powder. Now I had a half teaspoon, so I had to add two here. And one packet of ranch dressing mix. Now I know that sounds weird, but it makes it taste so good. Then you're also gonna add one package of taco seasoning. I like to use mild. Then we're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. This is soup, so now we really need to make it into soup. So four cups. So I just mixed it up just a little bit before I put the lid on just so all the dry spices will be moist. 
Now it's time to put the lid on, make sure that it's sealed all the way, and you're gonna turn that little knob to sealing, not venting. Then, because it's the saute button, you have to push cancel first, then you're gonna push pressure cook, and you're gonna go all the way down to five minutes. Because our meat's already cooked, we just need to make it warm. When it's ready to go, it will say on, that means you've done it right. All right, when it is all the way done, I did a quick release to let the steam out pretty quickly and it was all perfectly heated through and delicious. I like to add cheese, sour cream, even some tortilla strips on top of my loaded taco soup. Number three is our Instant Pot Chili. Now, Halloween is coming. I know it's a few months away still, but fall time and Halloween is like the time for chili. And so you guys are going to love this recipe. Now, just a word of warning, beware of the burn notice. So you might wanna add just a little bit more liquid if you get the burn notice a lot. My mom loved making Instant Pot Chili. When the weather cooled down a little bit, you needed some jackets, and she didn't have a ton of time so she could throw everything in and cook it. Now, if you wanna cook your hamburger in your Instant Pot, you can. All you have to do is push the saute button, put your meat in there. I would also put your onions in there and you'll cook them together. I cooked my meat in advance. I'll put a link in the description for you on how to cook it inside your Instant Pot. Now onto the chili, I have one pound of cooked ground beef. I have three stalks of celery that I chopped up and then one whole onion. You don't have to use a whole onion. I just like onions, so I like to do the whole thing. On top of that, you're gonna add one can of kidney beans. I used dark kidney beans and I drained them, rinsed them and drained them. Then you have eight ounces of tomato sauce and two cans of diced tomatoes just thrown right on top. Now with one of those cans of diced tomatoes, I just filled up about half a cup of water and dumped it in the pot. Now the next thing is one fourth cup of ketchup. You can measure if you want, I just always eyeball my ketchup. This next step is optional, but my mom always does it, so you add one tablespoon of sugar. Then two tablespoons of Worcestershire sauce. Worcestershire, Worcestershire, lots of comments about that one. You can say it how you want. I call it Worcestershire sauce. So you can mix it around a little bit if you want to, but it's all pressurizing together, so I just put the lid on. Make sure your little knob is on sealing, not venting. Then I'm using, of course, the manual button. So if you have a different Instant Pot, you use pressure cook, just anything to make it pressurized, just normal. And you're gonna cook it for 10 minutes. Now you can turn the knob and let the pressure release or you can let it release on its own. Now the chili is all the way done. You're gonna just mix it up a little bit. And when you serve it, add your favorite toppings. I love cheese and corn chips. Recipe number four is our chicken noodle soup. Now I love this recipe because if you need a fast recipe, it only takes about five minutes to cook and about 10 minutes total from start to finish. So I'm gonna start by adding two cans of canned chicken. Now you can use rotisserie chicken. You can also use just thawed chicken or frozen chicken. I'll tell you how to do that in just a second. So right now I'm just gonna add my two cans of already cooked chicken into the bottom of my pot. Next you're gonna add one pound of carrots. I just use the bag carrots, but you can use other carrots too. The recipe called for a can of corn, so I just cut up two ears of corn and then also one half onion. And I'm just gonna dump that on top of the carrots. Next, I added six cups of chicken broth. So I had a carton, which is four cups, and then a can, which is two. If you feel like you need more chicken broth, you can go ahead and add one to two more cups of chicken broth. Then I'm gonna add about a half a cup of green onions, all chopped up. Now for the spices, I'm gonna add about a half teaspoon of garlic powder, and a little bit of salt and pepper just for taste. Now, if you have pre-cooked chicken, you're gonna add your egg noodles right now and everything's just gonna cook together. So I added a whole bag. It was a lot of noodles. If you don't want that many noodles, I would probably do a half a bag or three-fourths of a bag. So right now I'm just mixing it a little bit before I put the lid on. The noodles don't have to be covered. All right, so my lid is on. Make sure it's on sealing, not venting, and I'm gonna go to five minutes. Now, here's the trick. If you want to cook thawed chicken that's not cooked yet, you're going to take, don't put your any vegetables in yet, and you're gonna go up to 20 minutes and just cook your chicken broth and your chicken. 
then the last five minutes you're going to put everything else back in and cook the rest for five minutes. If your chicken is cooked, you're going to cook it all just for five minutes at the same time. I did a quick release there so I let all the steam out. Then once all the steam's out, you can open your lid and your chicken noodle soup is all done. I love that if you have pre-cooked chicken, it only takes five minutes to throw this recipe together. Number five is our sweet potato soup. Now, I love sweet potatoes, so that's why I decided to put this one on the list because it is amazing. It's a little bit sweet, but it has an amazing taste. So you're gonna start with one onion chopped up and two large sweet potatoes peeled and chopped. And they're gonna go right in the bottom of your Instant Pot. Next, you're gonna add about one cup of broccoli. I added about two cups because I love broccoli. Okay, then you're gonna add one to two cups of carrots. I just added the whole bag. Now to add the seasonings. You're gonna add one teaspoon of parsley, then one teaspoon of thyme leaves, and on top of that, you're gonna add about one teaspoon of pepper. Then add one to two teaspoons of salt. Now, if you're making this vegetarian, you could add vegetable broth, but I like chicken broth, so you're gonna add four cups of chicken broth. Now it's time to put the lid on, make sure that it's closed all the way, and that your knob is on sealing, not venting. Now because it's mostly vegetables, you only have to cook it for five minutes. I pushed manual for five minutes. And because there's no meat, you can also push it over to venting as soon as your five minutes is up. Again, if you want this vegetarian, don't add the bacon bits. But if you do like bacon, you can add as much or as little as you want. I just added a small package of it. So now we need to make the soup creamy, so we're going to add two cups of whole milk. You don't have to add whole milk, you can use skim if you want, but whole milk will make it nice and creamy. After I added my milk, I pushed the saute button so I could mix in the milk and the bacon and so everything is cooked together and the milk will warm up. I only had to saute it for about two minutes before everything was heated through. This is a perfect meal for a really busy night because you only have to cook it for about five. Number six is our minestrone soup. Now this is, again, okay, these are all my favorites, but this one is so good. My kids love the little minestrone noodles and just all the meat and all the flavors together makes it taste amazing. So I'm gonna start by pushing the saute button because I need to cook my meat. Now if you already have pre-cooked meat, that's gonna make this go by even faster. So right now, because it's sautéing, I put my meat in and I have this little chopster. I will put a link in the description for you because this is my favorite tool in the kitchen. Well, other than the Instant Pot, of course. So I'm just gonna brown my meat just right inside of my Instant Pot. Now once it's almost all the way cooked, I'm gonna go ahead and add one whole onion and then mix that all together just so the onion can brown a little bit while the meat finishes up cooking. Now I'm gonna leave that there for just a little bit and stir every few minutes, but while that's finishing cooking, I'm gonna chop up one zucchini, two stalks of celery, and then pour those into my Instant Pot with my meat and my onions. Now I also chopped up two cups of small potatoes and about two cups of carrots. On top of that, you're gonna add about one teaspoon of chopped up cloves. Um, you can use whole cloves if you want to. Then you're gonna add one can of diced tomatoes. Now I'm putting those in now because my saute button is still on and I need some liquid on the bottom of my pan. All right, I'm gonna just mix these up a little bit and then continue adding more things. All right, so right now I'm gonna add one tablespoon of Italian seasoning and three cups of tomato juice. Next, you're gonna add one can of dark red kidney beans. Now these I had rinsed and drained so they're ready to go and then one can of cannellini beans, the white cannellini beans rinsed and drained also. All right, then you have one can rinsed and drained of green beans. Now, as you can see, my pot is getting really, really full, so just be careful as you're stirring. Now you're gonna add one cup of the little tiny minestrone noodles. These are my most favorite and my kids love them. You can add different noodles if you want to, it's totally up to you. So you're just adding one cup and then I'm gonna add about a cup and a half to two cups of beef broth. Now I don't wanna to add too much more because it's gonna to overfill. 
So put your lid on, make sure your knob is turned to sealing, not venting. Now you're gonna cancel what you have going. So you're gonna cancel the saute button. Then you're gonna push pressure cook or manual. Now you're gonna go up to six minutes. That's gonna cook your noodles and your vegetables, everything else. When it's done, I let it release on its own for about 10 minutes or so. You can do a quick release as soon as it's done, but I was running some errands real fast. All right, now we're gonna open the lid and see how it is. Oh, it is perfect. The noodles are done perfectly. Everything is cooked all the way through. Now here is the hard part. You have to mix very, very carefully. Now if you have an eight quart, this recipe is perfect for an eight quart, but a six quart will still work. All right, I need some more liquid in there, so I'm actually gonna add about one to two cups more of beef broth into my soup. Now if you noticed, I didn't add a lot of salt and pepper. Um, you can add that sparingly or you could put it on your table and they can add it to their own bowl of soup. Number seven is our seven can tortilla soup. Now I love this recipe because for the most part you probably have all the cans in your pantry. So it's a quick, I don't have anything to eat meal. So you just grab what you have in the pantry, dump it in your Instant Pot and you're good to go. So first you're gonna start with one can of chicken and dump it right in. Then one can of pinto beans, one can of black beans. Now my beans have been rinsed and drained. Next is one can of corn, but don't drain that. You're gonna dump that right into your Instant Pot. Then we're gonna have one can of diced red tomatoes. Dump everything in, you don't wanna drain that either. And then one can of enchilada sauce. Now I usually use mild enchilada sauce because my kids don't like it spicy. Next we're gonna add two cups of chicken broth and I have a little helper. She really wanted to help. And then for the seasoning, you're gonna add either one packet of taco seasoning or about two to three tablespoons. However much seasoning you like, you can add a little bit more. Then you're just gonna take a spoon and mix it all together. Now you don't have to use canned chicken, you can use normal chicken breasts. Just make sure you cook it accordingly. If you use canned chicken, you're gonna cook it for four minutes on manual. If you have raw chicken, you're gonna go up to 15 minutes. Now, when I do freezer meals, I don't whip up a ton of them at one time. I make one recipe and then I make the same exact recipe and stick that in the freezer. So my trick is I like to use a water pitcher and put a plastic freezer bag just right inside of it. So I'll just do my same steps, a can of chicken, two cans of beans that are rinsed and drained. Then you're gonna add your can of corn, remember leave the juice in there, can of diced tomatoes, and then one can of your enchilada sauce. Now it's gonna get a little bit full, it will seep down just a little. Add your taco seasoning, and then you're gonna add your two cups of chicken broth. Now if you are making this meal to go in your slow cooker, you're gonna cook it for three to four hours on low. Now you can cook it frozen or thawed, it doesn't really matter. Now once all my ingredients are in there, I'm going to slowly wiggle it out and zip it up. Now before I put it in my freezer, I'm gonna mix it a little bit, then take out any excess air that I possibly can get out of there. Now I like to store my freezer meals so they will lay flat and then I can stack them on top of each other. But if you wanna freeze it so it will fit inside of an Instant Pot, Put it back inside your pitcher and go ahead and freeze it just like that inside your freezer. All right, my soup is done cooking. I did a quick release just to make it a little bit faster and then I mix it up. I like to serve this with sour cream, cheese, green onions, pretty much everything you have on tacos, that's what you can put on top of it. Number eight is our Instant Pot Stew. Now we had stew growing up all the time. So this is my mom's special recipe. At the end, you'll notice that I love to add ketchup on top of my stew. I know that sounds so weird, but I'm telling you, you just have to try it. Here are all the ingredients you will need. So I'm gonna start off with the celery. I have three stalks of celery or one cup that I just chopped up, one cup or one whole onion chopped up, four or five small red potatoes, then we have one pound of carrots, I just did a bag, one cup of frozen peas, now one or two cups of beef broth. The recipe doesn't call for Lipton onion soup mix, but I love it. Then you have one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce and salt and pepper to taste. Woo, that's it. 
Okay, so I'm gonna start by adding my meat to the bottom of my Instant Pot. Then just, you're gonna add everything on top. So I add my celery, my potatoes, my onions. I did all my big things first. So next I'm gonna add my carrots right on top and then my peas are gonna go right on top of the carrots. Now as you can see, I'm getting pretty close to my fill line, so I'm gonna try and spread it down as much as I possibly can. Then I'm adding two cups of beef broth, just because I want a little more liquid in there so it will pressurize a little bit better. Because this Instant Pot is full to the brim. Next I'm gonna add one tablespoon of Worcestershire sauce, the recipe actually calls for one teaspoon, but I love Worcestershire sauce, so I'm doing one tablespoon. All right, and then you're gonna add your Lipton onion soup mix right on top. I probably should have added that before I added my beef broth, but that's okay. So I'm just gonna put my salt and pepper on top too. You can add more when it's done cooking, but I just added a little. Okay, now I'm just gonna mix in my seasonings a little bit. You don't have to get too crazy because it will all pressurize. Okay, I kind of made sure everything was flat so the lid would go on. Make sure it's on sealing, not venting. I'm gonna go manual all the way up to 30 minutes. Now, I did a quick release because we were starving, but you could let it release on its own if you wanted. Now I'm going to take the lid off and you'll see just how amazing this stew looks. It smells so good. Now growing up, I don't know about you guys, but we always put ketchup on top of our stew and I still love it with ketchup today. Number nine is wild rice soup. Now my husband loves wild rice and so that's why this made the list. This is one of his most favorite soups. If you're kind of worried that your kids might not like it, I'm telling you, just give it a try. It's so delicious. I'm gonna start by cutting up half of an onion. Now, if you choose to use a whole onion, that's totally fine. I love onions, so the recipe calls for half, but I'm gonna use a whole onion. Next, I have five celery stalks, and you're just gonna cut them up into thin pieces. If you want your celery thick, you can, but I like it thin, so my kids really can't tell that it's there. Next, I'm chopping up some carrots. Now, I used a one pound bag of carrots. I'm just chopping up into bite-sized pieces. You can also use about five normal carrots, chopping them up. Now on top of that, I'm adding about three cloves of garlic or two teaspoons of minced garlic. Now the rice that I like to use is a wild rice blend. You can use just straight wild rice if you like. So we're gonna add one cup of wild rice. And as you can see, I did not rinse this rice and it was still just fine. Now you're gonna add four cups of broth. So I'm using chicken broth. You can also use vegetable broth if you want it to be vegetarian. Now it's time for the seasoning. So I'm gonna add one teaspoon of poultry seasoning. Now you can find poultry seasoning at almost any grocery store. I found mine at Walmart. So you're gonna get a teaspoon and just dump it right on top. Next, you're gonna add one teaspoon of salt. Now, I'm just using table salt. If you have other salt you like, that works great too. Just, you need to add a little bit of salt or it won't have a lot of flavor. And the very last ingredient is mushrooms. Now, if you don't like mushrooms, you don't have to add them, but I love mushrooms. So you're gonna put your lid on, make sure that your little knob is turned to ceiling. Then you're gonna push the pressure cook button or the manual button and you're gonna go up to 45 minutes. Because it's wild rice, it takes a while for it to cook. Now when it's done, I switch the knot up over for a quick release. Once all the pressure is out, you can go ahead and take the lid off and your soup is gonna smell delicious. But you're not done yet. You need to make it a creamy soup. So on my stove top, I'm gonna take a pan on medium high heat and add six tablespoons of butter, let it melt a little bit, then add half a cup of flour. And you're just gonna mix that around until everything becomes nice and smooth. Now you're gently going to pour in your milk, mix as you pour, so it will become nice and smooth. The goal is not to have it chunky. Now once it's all smooth, you can go ahead and pour that right into your Instant Pot. Now I just took a whisk and slowly started mixing that in. If you do have some chunks of flour, that's okay. It will be smoothed out as you whisk in your Instant Pot. And number 10, this is our Disneyland copycat clam chowder. Now, I can't be in Disneyland right now because obviously it's closed, but I do have dreams of just sitting there Oh, in the middle of Disneyland eating my bread bowl with clam chowder. So this is the copycat recipe. It tastes 
very close. So if you're missing Disneyland, this is the perfect recipe for you to make. First, we're gonna start with the vegetables. So I have a red pepper, a green pepper, about three stalks of celery, and two cans of clams. Then we have half an onion and four potatoes. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and chop all of these up. I'm sure you would love to see me chop, but for cooking's sake, it's a lot easier. Now I'm just gonna dump all of my chopped vegetables into the Instant Pot. Now that all the vegetables are in the bottom of the pot, I'm gonna go ahead and add my clam juice. Now you don't wanna add the clams yet. We're gonna add those at the very end. So keep the little lid on so you can just pour the juice into the Instant Pot. Then I'm gonna add one cup of water into the Instant Pot to help pressurize. All right, now that everything is in for right now, go ahead and put your lid on. Make sure your knob is turned to sealing, not venting. And we are gonna cook this because it's just vegetables. We're going down to seven minutes. So now we're gonna make a little ruse to thicken up the soup. So I have five tablespoons of butter that I'm putting over the stove top and then I'm going to add in five tablespoons of flour. So that's easy, five and five. So once the butter's all melted, go ahead and mix that together. Now you'll leave it on the stove top for about oh, two to five minutes or so. Now when it's all done, it should look like this. This is the perfect time to add in your milk. So you can add milk or cream. So I added one and a half cups of milk. You can add cream, but we're making it a little healthier here. And you're just gonna continue to whisk that over medium high heat until all of the butter and flour and milk are all mixed together. All right, so now my Instant Pot beeped, so I'm gonna take the pressure out of the Instant Pot with a quick release and then pull the lid off. So all the vegetables are done cooking, so I'm just gonna add my butter and flour and milk mixture. Go ahead and mix that around a little bit and then it's time to add the seasoning. So I'm gonna add about a half teaspoon of pepper, a half teaspoon of dried thyme, and about a half teaspoon of salt. You can add more if you'd like. Then, this is the secret sauce, Tabasco sauce, hot sauce, something to add just a little bit of kick. And then go ahead and add your clams very last. And that is pretty much it to this recipe. You go ahead and just mix it all in, and I just keep it in my Instant Pot on the warm setting until I'm ready to serve. So using the Instant Pot and the stove top at the same time, this recipe was done in 20 minutes. Now you can also serve this recipe with a little bit of parsley on top if you would like. All right guys, I hope you enjoyed these top 10 soup recipes. Now if you want more of our top 10 recipes, you can find those right there. And I will see you guys next time, bye.